Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to teach you your letters. 3D letters, that is. Decorating with letters has become a super popular trend, and it's something you see everywhere these days, whether it's just one letter, like on a table or a wall, or a whole word on a mantle. Using letters to decorate is definitely an easy way to personalize any space. Of course, you can buy pre-made letters, but sometimes that turns into a letter scavenger hunt because some letters are really hard to find. And that's why I thought it would be fun to create a collection of 3D letters and numbers to share with you. So let's go on over to my craft table so I can show you all of the awesome things I made and let's get started. As you can see, I have the entire alphabet for you to make, plus all of the numbers. Um, I'm so excited to share this with you. All right, so now before we go over all the materials that you need to make these 3D letters and numbers, I wanted to share one more really cool thing that makes these so special. They aren't just for decoration. Each one of these letters is also a box. You can open them up just like this. Just imagine all of the fun goodies that you can put inside. You could use them to collect keepsakes or add some candy and treats to give as a gift. So fun, right? Okay, so for materials, you need good quality cardstock. I'm using 65 pound cardstock in a variety of fun colors, but feel free to coordinate your colors with your own personal style, taste, or occasion. These would be awesome for a party. You can use solid cardstock or maybe pick a pretty pattern, as I've done on many of my letters here, to match your decor. Now each letter is made up of several sections, so a good glue will make all of the difference. I'm using Barely Art Precision Craft Glue to keep them together securely. You can also use double-sided foam tape like this, and that comes in handy to add some depth and dimension to your decorative letters, if you'd like, totally optional. Now your letters can be cut by hand, of course, but to speed up the process, I'm gonna show you how to cut your letters with a Cricut cutting machine. I'll also explain how to use the scoring stylus, but you can also use a scoring wheel if you want. You'll want a green machine mat, a scraper, and a brayer for the best results. And one last thing are washers. You might wonder what in the world these little metal washers are used for. Keep watching the video and I will show you how they work their magic. And that's it. So let me show you where to find all of these 3D letters and numbers completely free, and then we will get started. Step one, get my free 3D paper letter designs. Go to jenniferbaker.com 375 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one, or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 375, and then click it to download a zip file with SVG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, DXF files, and printable PDFs for cutting by hand. And I've included files for every letter of the alphabet and the numbers 0 through 9. Step 2. Cut your 3D paper letters. For this project, I'm going to assemble the word maker. I'm going to show you how to cut and assemble the M, the A, and the R. The reason for this is that once you see how these three letters go together, you can follow the same basic steps to make all of the other letters and numbers in this set. The M is made up of straight lines, while the A and the R include a counter and a curve. I will explain what all of that means in more detail a little later. Let me show you how to cut these designs on a Cricut cutting machine. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the scored version of my 3D paper letter designs. But if you don't have a scoring tool, you'll want to select the letters from the No Score Tool version. And if you're unsure how to unzip and upload SVG files, please go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how. So once you've uploaded Maker, under Recent Uploads, go ahead and click on the M and then click Add to Canvas in the lower corner of the screen. I will explain how to prepare this letter to cut first. Now let's zoom out in order to see the full design. To do this, click on the minus sign in the lower left corner of the canvas. And once it's zoomed out, you can click off of the design, so click somewhere else on your canvas to unselect it. 
Now you'll notice in the layers panel on the right, the top eight layers are basic cut layers with faint lines. These are the layers that should be scored. If you're not sure which layers are score layers, click on the layer and you'll see that the color square is red under operation at the top of the canvas. We want to change these basic cut lines to score lines. Score lines will make it easier to fold the cardstock when we assemble the letter. To do this, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click on each of the eight layers in the layers panel on the right side of the canvas. Your layers should be highlighted a light gray like mine are. And at the top of the canvas, under Operation, select the drop down menu and change Basic Cut to Score. The score layers have now changed from solid lines to dashed lines. You'll also notice that the layers on the right side of the canvas have changed from Basic Cut to Score. Select the entire design by clicking Select All in the top menu. You can also select all by clicking Command A on the Mac or Control A on Windows, by the way. And then click Ungroup at the top of the Layers panel to ungroup the layers. This will allow us to select and manipulate individual layers. I have designed each letter with different colors to make it easier to identify the pieces during assembly. The top pieces of the box are yellow with green for the accent pieces. The bottom pieces of the box are orange with teal for the accent pieces. I will keep my yellow and green pieces in a stack and orange and teal pieces together as I cut my letters. You may find it easier to change the design colors to match the colors of your cardstock that you're going to use. If you decide to make your top and bottom pieces of the box the same color, you can easily identify the, the box top pieces by the sharp corners on the tabs. The tabs on the bottom pieces have rounded corners for the tabs. To change the color of the yellow box top pieces, hold down your shift key and select the four yellow layers in the layers panel At the top menu, click on the yellow box under Operation and select the color of your cardstock. Repeat these steps to change the bottom box pieces and accent pieces. Now we need to tell the machine which layers need to be scored. It looks obvious to us by looking at the design, but we need to tell our machine which basic cut and score layers go together. We do this by attaching the score layer to the base layer. If you forget this step or miss attaching any score layers, you will know as soon as you go to cut your letter as all of the score layers will be on their own mat. Let me explain how to do this. It can be a little tricky. Right now, each part of the letter is made up of three layers. The bottom layers are yellow and orange. The top layers are green and teal, and then we have the score layer. When we attach the score lines, we want to attach them to the bottom layers only, or the yellow and orange layers. We need to make sure we don't accidentally select the green and teal layers when doing this. Use the magnification tool in the lower left corner of the canvas to zoom in to better see the layers. Let's start in the top left corner of the letter M. Click your mouse outside of the yellow layer and then drag your mouse over the bottom yellow layer and the score layer. You don't have to select a huge area, just enough so that you have selected both layers. Make sure you don't select the green box at all, okay? Now with both of those layers selected, click Attach at the bottom of the Layers panel. If you accidentally select the top layer with the bottom and the score layers, you can click the Undo arrow at the top left corner of the canvas. This is the arrow that faces left. You can also undo by clicking Command Z on the Mac or Control Z on Windows. Once you click Attach, you'll notice that the green layer is not visible. This is because the newly attached layers move to the top of the Layers panel and are now on top of the green boxes. The green boxes have not gone away or anything like that. They just moved behind the other ones. Repeat this process until all of the score lines have been attached to their respective cut layers. The 
is what my canvas looks like after attaching all of my score lines. If you want to display your canvas so that the green and teal boxes are back to the top, hold down your shift key and select all of the yellow and orange pieces on the canvas. Then at the top of the canvas, click the drop down for arrange and select send to back. We are now ready to cut the letter M, so click make it in the upper right corner of the canvas. If you're prompted, select on mat and then click continue. This will only show up if you're using a Cricut Maker 3 or a Cricut Explore 3 machine. Review your mats and make sure you don't have a mat with just score lines on it. If you see any issues, cancel the cut and return to the canvas to attach your score lines. The letter M has six mats, so if everything looks good, click continue. On the next screen, we'll select our material. I'm going to choose medium cardstock, and for the pressure, I like to select more for a nice clean cut. If you're using a Maker 3 or Explorer 3, you can check Remember Material Settings to avoid having to select the material again after each mat cuts. Now place a sheet of cardstock onto a green standard grip machine mat, using your hands or a brayer tool to make sure it's stuck to the mat really well. For the orange and yellow mats, we'll be using a scoring tool. These mats are the pieces for the top and bottom box of the letter. For my Maker 3, Design Space tells me to load the single scoring wheel into clamp B. You can also use the scoring stylus if you don't have the scoring wheel. To change from a single scoring wheel to the scoring stylus, click Edit Tools next to the Load Tools and Material, and then select the scoring stylus. I'm using my scoring wheel, which goes into clamp B. If you're using the scoring stylus, place it in clamp A. Now load your mat into your machine, and then press the flashing button to begin. If you're using the single scoring wheel, once the score lines are finished, Design Space will prompt you to remove the scoring wheel and replace it with the fine point blade in clamp B, but do not unload your mat. If you're using a scoring stylus in clamp A, the cut will immediately begin after scoring this cardstock. You will not be prompted to change tools, and that is a little faster. After you've switched tools, press the go button to complete the cut. All right, so once the cut is all done, uh, press the unload button to remove your mat from your machine, flip your mat over onto your work surface, and then slightly bend the mat back to help release the cardstock. If necessary, use a scraper tool to remove any tiny pieces left on the mat. Make sure to keep the pieces from the top of the box and the pieces for the bottom of the box in separate stacks for each letter. Plastic storage bags are also really handy to keep pieces together while you're working on them. This will help when it's time to put everything together. Step three, assemble the 3D paper letters. Now that all of our letters have been cut, it's time to assemble them. Each of my 3D paper letters and numbers are made up of a box top, a box bottom, and accent pieces that go on the top and sides of the box. Let's begin by assembling the box top for the letter M. Remember, the box top includes the pieces from the yellow and green mats. The box top pieces have sharp corners for the tabs. Grab these pieces along with a scraper tool and some craft glue. The top side of each piece is the side that has the score lines. You will never be attaching pieces to each other on the side that has score lines. You can set the accent pieces to the side for now. Start by folding the cardstock on the score lines for the, each piece of the box top. I like to use my scraper tool to make a nice sharp fold. My credit card or a gift card also works great. Mm -hmm. 
to assist in connecting the side pieces together, I've added cutout shapes in the tabs for all of my 3D paper letters and numbers. I'm going to show you how to identify which pieces go together as we assemble the letters for the word maker. So grab the M piece and place it in front of you. Look for the piece that has four sections separated by folds with a circle in one tab and a square in another tab. At the top left of the letter M piece, you will see a tab with a circle. Add glue to this tab. Connect the straight end of the four section piece that has an adjacent tab with a circle. I find holding the glued pieces in place for four to five seconds is usually enough time to secure them in place. The length of this four section piece should be vertical and the tab should be facing toward your right. Now flip the M piece over so the back side is up. The piece that we just glued to the M should now be in the upper right corner. Now bend the right side panel of the M piece up. This is the side that we just attached our first piece to. Your piece should be at a 90 degree angle. Add glue to the first tab of the piece at the top right of the M. Align and attach this tab to the top of the M and hold in place for about four to five seconds. Bend the attached piece on the fold and then add glue to the next tab. Align and attach the next tab to the slanted edge in the middle right side of the M. Add glue to the next tab and align it to the edge of the middle left side of the M. Add glue to the next tab and align it to the top left of the M. Now take the panel on the left side and bend it up 90 degrees. Add glue to the tab with a square and connect it to the inside end of the piece that we just assembled to the top of the M. You should never be gluing a tab to the front or right side of the box pieces. Your M should look like mine right now. The bottom right corner of the M has a tab with a triangle. Glue the straight end of the piece that is adjacent to the tab with this triangle to the tab with a triangle at the bottom right corner of the M. Add glue to the triangle tab at the bottom of the M and connect it to the end of the strip that has an adjacent tab with a triangle. Now add glue to the tab with a triangle and align it to the bottom of the M. Continue adding glue to the other two tabs on this piece and align the sections to the edge of the M. If you look at the last piece, there is a long slit in one tab and an X in the other tab. This identifies that the end of the piece with the slit connects to the end of the piece with a slit in the tab on the piece that we just glued to the M. And the other end of this piece connects to the tab with the X at the bottom of the M. Add glue to the tab with the X and connect the straight end of the piece with an adjacent X in the tab. Add glue to the tab with the X on the piece that we just glued to the X tab on the M and glue the tab to the bottom of the M. Continue gluing the three remaining tabs to the M as we did gluing on the top piece. When you get to the end, Glue the tab with a slit to the back of the adjacent strip to connect both pieces. This is what my M looks like now. Now we're going to glue the accent pieces to the top and the sides of the M. Before gluing, identify the placement of each piece. Some of the pieces are very similar in size. There should be a small border around each piece. 
The easiest pieces to identify placement for are the M and the two side strips. Once you've determined where each of the accent pieces belong, begin gluing them to the top and sides of the letter. And this is what my assembled box top looks like for the letter M. To assemble the bottom of the M, simply repeat the same steps that I just walked you through to assemble the top box of the M. Remember, you'll be gluing pieces to the M on a side that was not scored. When you have finished assembling the box bottom, glue on the accent pieces. Now slide the box bottom into the box top to finish the letter M. Now the rest of the letters go together pretty much the same, but let me show you a few extra things. As I mentioned earlier, the letter A has a piece called a counter. That's the area that's entirely enclosed in the letter. When assembling letters and numbers with counters, you will find it's much easier to assemble the counter area first. So let me show you how. This piece has a circle in one of the top tabs and a circle in the tab at the other side. This means we are going to be connecting the strip to itself. Apply glue to the smallest of the three tabs at the top of this piece. Glue this to the bottom of the triangle in the counter area. Make sure that the tab is pointing down and you align the edge of the fold for the tab with the edge bottom part of the triangle on the A. Add glue to the one of the long tabs on either side. Align the edge of the fold at the tab with the edge of the A piece. Glue the other tab to the opposite side of the counter. Take the tab with the circle and glue it to the adjoining side. The tab should be glued to the inside so you don't see it. And that's how we do the counter inside a letter or a number. Now let's work on the R. As you can see, the R has a counter that's curved. So here's how we put that together. First, fold along the score lines of all the box top pieces. Grab the small piece that has one tab with a circle, one tab with a triangle, and a blank tab in the middle. Add glue to the tab without a symbol and place it on the straight edge of the counter area for the R. Now take the short piece that has the matching circle and triangle tabs. Add glue to the tab with the triangle and glue the tab behind the straight edge of the end of the piece adjacent to the matching triangle tab. Begin by adding glue to the small tabs. I like to add glue to two tabs at a time, stick them to the R, and work my way around the curve slowly. Make sure the cardstock aligns to the inside curved edge of the R. When you get to the other end of the piece, add glue to the tab with the circle and glue it behind the end of the piece that we just glued. Once that part is together, you can finish assembling the R following the steps that I showed you earlier. Step four, show it off. So here are all of my finished letters. Pretty cool, huh? They're so colorful and cherry, and I just love that you can use them for so many things, including gift boxes. Now, another way to add some pop to your letters is by using double-sided foam adhesive to give the top layers some lift and more dimension. And if you want to dress up your 3D paper letters and numbers even more, you could add some paper flowers. I have tutorials on regular sized paper roses as well as miniature paper roses that would add a fun touch. You can find that on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash make miniature paper roses. I also used a variety of flowers to decorate an entire letter. You'll find that on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash paper flower letter. And remember, if you do add decorations, Make sure to resize them if necessary so they fit on your letters. There are so many possibilities. Be creative and use your imagination. 
So I mentioned at the start of this video that we're using washers. So you can give some of your top heavy letters like this P a lift so they don't fall over. You can just put washers inside the bottoms of the letters so they stand upright and don't just like flop over when you're displaying them. Awesome, right? You can use these 3D paper letters as standalone initials or monograms, words, or meaningful phrases as decorations for parties, special occasions, room decor. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. I can't wait to see how your 3D letters turn out and how you use them to decorate your rooms. I hope that you enjoyed learning about how to make these 3D letters with me. If you have any questions about creating your 3D paper crafts, please let me know. I love paper crafts. Leave your question below this video or ask over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And also check out my how to assemble 3D paper crafts video here for some extra tips. And you might also love my Scrabble wall art project tutorial video here. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.